But uh, the one o'clock first, here's Peter O'Sullivan. Yes, ten runners in the one o'clock, and Miss Nero is the four to one favourite. Emo Forever, five to one. Ross Stern, 13 to two. Ruby Flight and Von Trapp, both on the seven to one mark. Malediction out to eight to one from seven. Troy Fair, 10 to one. Sand Castle is 12 to one. Touch of Luck, 20. And Malford Lad, double carpet, 33 to one. And the first we see is uh, Miss Nero. Yes, Miss Nero there in the yellow and green colours. She's won twice on this course already. And for a very lucky owner, Ron Yates, he's had eight winners already this season for trainer Richard Lee. Four to one favourite, and it's five to one bar. Ridden by Bruce Dowling, Miss Nero very much in form and certainly likes this course. In the middle of the bunch there with the light colours, brown sleeves, is Russ Stone. Now he turns out quickly after running third to Saffron Lord and timely start. Chepstow last Saturday. Decent horse this one, stays well. 13 to 2, John Brown in the saddle. Emo forever there in this stripes. Well, certainly this was the best turned out horse before racing. He won here two seasons ago. He's run well on other occasions. Certainly likes this course, five to one. Trained by Peter Easterby, number nine. Ruby Flight, another mare. Uh, she's fancied there in the uh, stripe jacket. Peter Scudamore in the plate. This is an open race and they're off. Join Peter. And they've got uh, 13 flights to jump this time. It's three miles on a furlong. The Nicolet Instruments handicap hurdled, and Troy Fair is taking him along in the early stages from Russ Stone and Malford Laird and Sand Castle. Just in behind them come Von Trapp. But Troy Fair, the clear leader, as they jump the first from Russ Stone and Sand Castle and Malford Laird. Then comes Von Trapp and Miss Nero. Behind Miss Nero is Malediction. The two back markers at the moment are Emo Forever and, and Touch of Luck. And Troy Fair by about five lengths now. From Rustone in second, then Sam Castle and Von Trapp and Malford Laird and Miss Nero. Then comes Ruby Flight. And the back markers are Malediction, Emo Forever and Touch of Luck. Troy Fur and Tom Morgan. About ten lengths clear now of Russ Stone and Von Trapp. Then Miss Nero on the inside. Sandcastle and Malford Ladd. The leader coming to the second. Troy Fur, a long way clear. Of Russ Stone and Von Trapp and Sandstone and Malford Ladd. And on the inside, Miss Nero. Being followed by Malediction and Ruby Flight. And the two back markers, A Touch of Luck and Nemo Forever. And Troy Fair coming to the third. Not quite such a commanding lead. Troy Fair, rather slow at that one. Miss Nero on the inside of Touchstone, then Von Trapp, then Ruby Flight and Malediction and Malford Ladd. And comes Sand Castle. Emo Forever and Touch of Luck. Troy Fair. Jumps the fourth. Clear of Miss Nero and Russ Stone. Von Trapp and Ruby Flight and Malediction and Malford Ladd. And Sand Castle on the outside being followed by Emo Forever. Back marker still Touch of Luck. Troy Fair, by a good ten lengths to a dozen now, from Miss Nero and Russ Stone, Von Trapp and Ruby Flight and Sam Castle, and behind them, Malford Lad and Malediction, Emo Forever and Touch of Luck. Over the fifth, Troy Fair, from Miss Nero and Russ Stone, Ruby Flight, then Von Trapp. Sam Castle behind Sam Castle, Malediction Emo Forever, Malford Ladd, and finally Touch of Luck. Over the six, Troy Fair, clear of Miss Nero, Touchstone, Ruby Flight, Malford Ladd, and Von Trapp. Touch of Luck, still the back marker. So Troy Fair coming to jump to the, the flight that will be the last on the next set. Seventh this time. Troy Fair from Miss Nero and Rustone and Ruby Flight and Von Trapp. 
Malediction, Emo Forever, Sam Castle, Malford, Laird and Tutterluck. So another full circuit. Troy Fair with Russ Stone and Miss Nero very much nearer now. And Ruby Flight with the sheepskin nose bear with Malediction on the inside. Then Emo Forever, the grave on trap. Sam Castle, Malford, Laird and Tutterluck. Running downhill now towards the next flight. Troy Fair from Russ Stone, Miss Nero. Ruby Flight and Malediction, Von Trapp and Emo Forever. Coming to the eighth of the 13 flights in all in this Nicolet Instruments handicap hurdle. Troy Fair from Miss Nero and Russ Stone and Von Trapp on the outside, Ruby Flight. Malediction getting closer on the inner, been saving ground all the time. Dermot Brown on the inner. On Malediction, as they come down towards the ninth, Troy Fair. From Miss Nero, Von Trapp, Ruby Flight, Malediction, Emo Forever. Troy Flight, being pressed now and overtaken, in fact, by Miss Nero. Miss Nero takes it up now with four to jump. Malediction moving up on the inside to go second. Ruby Flight is third for Emo Forever. Troy Fair losing ground. Rustone comes next and then Von Trapp a long way back then the Malford Laird and Touch of Luck as they come to the next flight number 10. Miss Nero landed in the lead from Malediction second. Then Ruby Flight third. Four is Emo Forever. Then Rustone who's under pressure. Von Trapp, who's uh, weakening, and behind him, Troy Fair, who's dropping out of it too as they run downhill. Miss Nero from Ruby Flight, Malediction on the inner, and then Emo Forever, and these four a long way clear of the remainder. Running down towards the next flight now, three from home, Miss Nero being pressed by Ruby Flight, Malediction on the inside, Emo Forever close in fourth as they come to it. And Ruby Flight landed just in the lead from Miss Nero, but Malediction coming there strongly on the near side. And it's Ruby Flight from Malediction now. Ruby Flight and Malediction with Emo Forever coming there strongly in third place. At the second last flight now, Ruby Flight from Malediction and Emo Forever rounding the home turn. Ruby Flight from Malediction under pressure, but Emo Forever still making ground. Coming towards the final flight now in the Nicolet Instruments handicap hurdle. Emo Forever on the stand side has just struck the front from Miss Nero with Malediction back in third. Emo Forever and Mark Dwyer come to take it up at the last flight. Jump it a length and a half clear of Miss Nero on the far side. And it's Ruby Flight on the far side, on the near side. It's Emo Forever, Emo Forever drawing away now from Ruby Flight as they race into the closing stages. Emo Forever's going to win this for Peter to be and Mark Dwyer as he comes to the line. Emo Forever wins it from Ruby Flight in second. It's going to be quite close for third with Malediction just holding Miss Nero. And so the result of the Nicolette Instruments is first, number eight, Emo Forever, owned by Mr. A. A. McCluskey, trained by Peter Easterby, and written by Mark Dwyer. Second, number nine, Ruby Flight, owned by Mr. R.J. Eckley, trained by Richard Eckley, written by Peter Scudamore. And third was number 11, Malediction, owned by Mrs. Donald H. Gort, trained by Mrs. Mercy Rymel, and written by Dermot Brown, fourth, was number two, Miss Nero. So an enormous crowd here at Cheltenham this afternoon to see principally, of course, the 28th running of the Mackeson Gold Cup. The North win the opening uh, race on Mackeson Day and they're strongly represented in the big one, notably by Jimmy Fitzgerald with Tickety Boo, by Arthur Stevenson with Sea Merchant and uh, Villiers Town. And Neville Crump, who won it in 76, represented by Reppington. But it's Peter Easterby who's won the opener here with Emo Forever. There he is, and here are the starting prices. First number eight, Emo Forever, five to one. Second number nine, Ruby Flight, 15 to two. And third, number 11, Malediction, nine to one. We'll be back there for the 135 and the big race. The magazine is at 210. Now it's Millwall three.
Right now at 1.35, it's the Allenson Bread Hurdle. Runners and riders from Peter. And two is Robin Wonder, written by Graham Bradley. Three is a horse with about uh, 50 pronunciations. No Gay, we're going to call him this afternoon. Nos Neguitha, however you like to have it, written by Mark Dwyer. Five is Makada, Simon Sherwood. Six, Solar Cloud, written by Richard Dunwoody. Seven, Firm Price, Peter Niven. Eight, Heart of Stone, Hugh Davis. Nine, Cashew King, Trevor Wall. Ten, Celtic Shot, Peter Scudamore. And 14, My Challenge, written by Alan Webb. And here's how they bet. And the Heart of Stone is the uh, joint favourite with a uh, Celtic shot, both at five to two. Firm Price is eleven to two. Nona Gate is seven to one. Cashew King eight. Robin Wonder has gone from eight to one to nine to one. Solar Cloud and uh, Mukadar twenty to one. And uh, my challenge has doubled from fifty to one to one hundred to one. That's the outsider, of course. So from the betting there, it looks a two-horse race, but certainly it's not. This is one that's got a chance, number three, Nona Gay. And in fact, if you ask five Irishmen how to pronounce this one's name today, you'll get five different pronunciations. He's a plain great big horse. This not half as handsome as his owner, I can tell you, but he certainly operates. He uh, had a good season last season and came out this year looking bigger and stronger than ever. He wears those blinkers and runs better in it. He was third up at Weatherby last time out and not beaten very far. Nona Gay, Nona Gay, he's trained by Peter Easterby, who won the last race, and Mark Dwyer, the winning jockey. Just excuse my voice, a little bit gravelly today, perhaps I'm getting older. Now, number 10, this is one with a chance. Celtic Shot, most beautiful horse, this one. He's trained by Fred Winter, the Fred Winter Stable, looking for its fourth winner of the season, and Peter Scudamore is in the plate. He's won his only race so far this season, Celtic Shot, that was at Sandown, and he won by no less than 20 lengths on that occasion. This is certainly one for your notebooks. Lovely horse. And another horse that has a chance here, one of the joint fabs, is Heart of Stone. Number eight, he's trained by Reg Akers and was judged to be the best turned out horse in the ring. Now, if anything to go by, the first race was won by Emo Forever, who was also the best turned out uh, horse in that race. He's five to two, second favorite, so that must mean we've got a clear favorite now. Well, he's won his only race this season, only ran once last year, finished second, had a bit of trouble there, and was produced beautifully by Reg Akers, as ever, to come and belt in on his first uh, run of the season. Number seven, his firm price there in the blue colors with the orange hoop. Now, this one is very much in form, won his last four races, two of them this season, but uh, just bear in mind that his wins were over two and a half miles at Weatherby and two and three quarters at Kelso. Well, if he gets a strong gallop here, and I think he will, this two miles at Cheltenham is equivalent to two and a half at a lot of other places. Cashew King only bought for 1,100 guineas as a yearling. Now, he is a half-brother to Mr. Snugfitch. You'll remember him being second in the Grand National. He's a five-to-one shot and a horse with a good chance. He was fourth on his only run so far this season. He'd had a run on the flat ten days earlier. His trainer said that he needed the run, but he's always a lean sort of a horse. Let's see if there's any move in the market. And uh, we have Cashew King on eight-to-one still. A Celtic shot the favourite nine to four. Heart of Stone five to two. Firm Price six to one. Nona Gate seven to one. Cashew King eight. Robin Wonder nine to one. A Solar Cloud and uh, Mukadar twenty. And my challenge is a hundred to one. And Robin Wonder was the winner last year. There he is in the yellow with the darker sleeves. He is a good horse. Never one to be uh, missed out of your calculations. This horse. Look particularly good in the paddock, though slightly burly, I might say. But he's a funny old character, and he might just be better when he's burly uh, than when he's really, really wound up. Trained by David Ellsworth, who's in great form. And Mukadar, haven't seen this fellow for a couple of seasons, and that isn't because of any training problems. It was because of ownership dispute. Well, he's a lovely horse. Oliver Sherwood then thought that he was going to be a champion hurdler. He may be a little bit ring rusty, but it'll be interesting to see how he runs. This is a very good race. The favourite, of course, Celtic shot from Fred Winter's stable. Fred, who'll be watching on television today, looks as if the goggles are coming down, so let's join Peter. And here, Mark Dwyer deputising for Lorcan Wire, who's at uh, Newcastle today. He's just won the 130, incidentally, on raise an argument. He's deputising on uh, Nona Gay, having won the opener for the stable, Mark. For Peter Easterby. 
and they're running and my argument is the first to show as they come to the first of the eight flights in this Allenson bred handicap hurdle two miles my argument and Mercado Mercado in my argument my challenge I should say and Mercado a little between those two then come Firm Price and Celtic Shot has taken quite a strong hold and Harder Stone is being tracked by Solar Cloud Nona Gay is tucked in behind Firm Price and then comes Cashew King and Robin Wonder just the back marker and my challenge and Makada disputing it my challenge on the right there with the sheepskin nose burn Makada with the white face that's Firm Price in third and then Celtic Shot as they jump the second and all safely over it. My challenge from Makada. Firm Price, Heart of Stone and Solar Cloud and Celtic Shot. Then Nona Gay, Solar Cloud, Cashew King and Robin One. My challenge on the inside of Makada. Firm Price, Heart of Stone and Celtic Shot. Then Solar Cloud and Nona Gay, Cashew King and Robin Wonder. They swing left-handed. My challenge from Makada, still matching strides from Firm Price and Harder Stone on the inside, right close to the rail. Then Solar Cloud and Celtic Shot, Nona Gay. Mark Dwyer won't be in too much of a hurry on Nona Gay, probably be holding him up. Robin Wonder, just the back marker. Coming down to the third, Makada and my challenge from Firm Price and Harder Stone. And Solar Cloud and Celtic Shot and Nona Gay and Robin Wonder. A tiny mistake there, Robin Wonder. And Cashew King on the outside and moving up a little bit. My challenge, just the leader from Makada, then Firm Price and those half colours of Heart of Stone. Celtic Shot the other side. Far side, Solar Cloud and then Nona Gay, then Robin Wonder, who's making a place and just relegating Cashew King to last. My challenge from Makada at the fourth of the eight flights. Heart of Stone jumped it in third then firm price on the outside with Celtic shot Nona Gay going quite well in the middle of the field Makada and my challenge as they race towards this uphill flight the fifth my challenge and Makada with Celtic shot now going third on the outside of Firm Price, then Harder Stone, known again Cashew King, Robin Wonder and Solar Cloud as they begin to run downhill now. Makada has gone to the front with three left to jump by about two with on the inside my challenge then firm price Celtic shots making ground towards the white outside all the time getting closer is Nona Gay and Cashew King solar clouds on the inside trying to get back into it but it's Makada with the advantage Makada as they come down towards the next flight from Celtic shot over on the far side Nona Gay has moved into third then on the far side firm price they've got two left to jump now it's Makada from Celtic shot Cashew King and Nona Gay with hard Stone coming there strongly once again on the inside. Second last flight now. Harder Stone, Makada, Celtic Shot just in behind them. Cashew King and Nona Gay racing round the home turn now in this Allenson bread hurdle with one flight left to jump and still a wide open race. Celtic Shot has just taken it up though from Heart of Stone. Then comes Nona Gay and Cashew King as they come down to the final flight. It's Celtic Shot with the advantage from Cashew King and Nona Gay. Harder Stone over on the far side. Celtic Shot landed in the lead there from Cashew King, Nona Gay over on the far side putting in a good run but Celtic Shot's holding them all as they come up towards the line, Celtic Shot from Nona Gay and Cashew King, Celtic Shot is going to win this well as they come to the line, Celtic Shot has won the Allenson bread hurdle, second will be Nona Gay and third firm price just ahead of Cashew King, so the one, two, three, four, Celtic Shot, Nona Gay, firm price, Cashew King. First, number 10, Celtic Shot, owned by Mr. D.E.H. Horton, trained by Fred Winter. What a tonic for Fred on uh, Mackerson Day, in which he's represented by Malia Mal. And Celtic Shot, of course, written by Peter Scudamore, his 47th winner of the season. Second was number three, Nona Gay, owned by Mr. Paul Green, trained by Peter Easterby and written by Mark Dwyer. And third was number seven, Firm Price, owned by Mrs. B. Kearney, trained by Mary Reevely, Mrs. Mary Reevely, and written by Peter Niven. Fourth was number nine, Cashew King. Now, what a great race to watch. Um, Mukada running for the first time in 23 months in the inside there. Ran a terrific race, but just starts to get tired. And here, Celtic Shot jumps that one just in front. 
and looked uh, always from now on as though he'd probably win. But then, looming up on the outside, came Cashew King, ridden differently today to Weatherby, uh, made a lot of use of it, Weatherby, but ridden from off the pace today. Heart of Stone, the early joint favourite on the inside there, with every chance at this point. And Nona Gay was always going well behind the leaders, but didn't find a lot when Mark Dwyer let him down. So going to the last, there's still any one of three or four that could win it coming round the elbow. But the 20-length stand-down winner, Celtic shot, going best of all with Peter Scudamore. But on his left now, Cashew King looks a real danger. Known to go in the pale blue colours on the inside, the heart of stone. And just weakening now is Bukada, the long absence uh, taking its toll. At the last, can Peter get him absolutely right? He has absolutely spot on over the last. And that's uh, all that he had to do, Celtic shot, to be sure of winning. Cashew King runs on well, a certain a great improvement on his Weatherby run and he might have been a bit short there as well Nona Gay, well he always runs a, a good race, second or third but uh, even with the visor to help him doesn't find a lot on the run in and now Celtic Shot turns what looked for a moment like being a difficult task into a very easy one, he's still got pounds in hand of the handicapper, he only had a three pound penalty today, he'd gone up six pounds in fact uh, before his last race and he's won today with seven or perhaps ten pounds in hand as Peter says a great tonic for Fred Winter. Yeah. And Peter Scudamore there will be hoping to provide a double tonic for Fred by winning his, his Peter's first Magazine Gold Cup next time and number four for his governor Fred Winter who won it in 82, 84 and 85. Each time in fact for Sheikh Ali Abu Kamsin who owns the stable hope Malia Mal in the big one this afternoon at 210. Meanwhile, the latest betting news on this uh, Mackerson, very, very competitive Mackerson, is of a mammoth bet on very promising the top weight and mount of Richard Dunwoody, who was laid in a single bet uh, by Hills this morning of 12,000 each way at 6 to 1, 72,000 to 12,000 each way. They laid him lose 150,000 in all from uh, 6 to 1 to 5 to 1. Ten lengths and three quarter quarters of a length uh, there in that Allenson bread. We'll look forward to you rejoining us for the Mackerson. Here now the starting prices on the 135. First, number 10, Celtic Shot, 9 to 4 favourite. Second, number 3, Nona Gay, 15 to 2. And third, number 7, Firm Price, 11 to 2. We'll be back there in good time for the Mackerson. It's off at 2.10, but we'll have the build up to the big race for you. Now, Clown, I Ross Arnott. 8, Malia Mal, Peter Scudamore, 9, Summons, Richard Rowe, 10, Bow Ranger, Mark Perrett, 11, Reppington, Colin Hawkins, 12, Fudge Delight, Simon Sherwood, 13, G.A., uh, written by Robert Supple, 17, Music Be Magic, with Phil Tuck putting up one pound overweight, and 18 is Brave Azar, written by Brendan Powell. Here's how they bet. Open betting, very promising, though, is the favourite five to one. Summons, Tickety Boo, and Bo Ranger are on six to one. Fudge Delight, ten to one. Malia Mal, twelve to one. Sea Merchant, fourteens. Western Sunset and uh, Reffington and Music Be Magic, sixteen to one. Twenty to one, bar these. And the favourite, very promising in the colours carried by Noni Gala in the last race. Those are Paul Green, this time trained by David Nicholson. And but for a change in the conditions this year, this horse would have had a five pound penalty and he'd have carried 12-4. But he still carries top weight of 12 stone. It's quite a task for him, but he's a decent horse. And certainly uh, he'll be trying to win it for the second year running. 12 months ago, he put paid to half breeds four timer in this very race. Very promising, going very strongly at the moment. Durham Edition has been pulled up. Half Free's moved into third. Cathy's Lad is four. Little Bay is five. Golden Friend is six. Very promising landed in the lead there. Very promising from our fun. Half Free is still making progress in behind the leader. Cathy's Lad is four. And Little Bay is delivering his challenge now as they race towards the final fence in the 27th running of the Mackerson Gold Cup. And Very Promising is in the lead from... Half free, trying to establish chasing history. Over on the far side, very promising. On the near side, half free. It's very promising by a length from half free. The faller there was half fun. Racing into the closing stages, half free on the near side, beginning to get up. Very promising on the far side. Very promising, fighting back, and he's going to win it as they come to the line. Very promising has won it. Half free is second. 
Cathy's lad is just going to be third. Well, Richard, can you do it again? Well, I hope so. The, the horse is very well. Um, I don't really think we could get him any better. He really is bouncing at home and uh, just need a bit of luck. How's the ground going to suit him? It must be a bit dead today. I've just had a walk round and I see they've, they've had the rollers on it. Um, top, of, top of the hill, it's quite good ground. There's just a patch down by the water. The first open ditch, it's, you know, that's the, that's the worst patch on the course. But um, just be on the soft side, I go. So you'd be hopeful? Oh, would, yeah. Did you see the twinkle in his eye? Yes, it was definitely there. He's got a very good chance of doing it for the second year running. Five to one favourite, it's six to one bar him. There's trainer David Nicholson on the right-hand side in his old sheepskin coat. And certainly this is something the Duke likes to do. Go with his jockey when he's mounted and just talk over those last private little things that they've got to say between themselves. You can see the hand gesticulating and uh, between these two, they've struck up a very good partnership indeed. Now there is Tickety Boo, what an exciting horse and very much on his toes. Amazingly, or not amazingly, it would be ironic if this horse beats very promising because he was trained by David Nicholson before being transferred to Jimmy Fitzgerald. Ladies Price is six to one, Mark Dwyer is in the saddle. Very decent horse, he's won his only race this season. That was at Newcastle on October the 28th, and there he was impressive. Though he only won by uh, a length in the end, he forged clear. He'd won in April in Ferry House and won quite comfortably. And last season was running a good race here, uh, only to fall coming down the hill. He was also brought down at Ascot, but generally a good and exciting jumper. That's Tickety Boo, Mark Dwyer in the saddle. So good crowd here to see the horses in the paddock. National Hunt viewers certainly love to look at the horses in the paddock and evaluate them for themselves. The back to us there, the dark colours, the light sleeves. This is Summons from Josh Giffords Yard. And he was anti-post favourite for a long time, principally because of his weight concession and a good performance first time out when second to Music Be Magic here at the end of October. He's shown the ability to handle his course when making most of the running here in April. They race down to the last now. It's Comera King on the near side. Summons on the far side. Olympic Prize trying to get in the picture. Comera King on the near side. Summons on the far side. The little between the two. Comera King on the near side. Summons over on the far side. And Summons summoning the greater speed now as they race into the closing stages. Is Jimmy Fitzgerald ever going to win, sir? The toaster He's certainly not going to this time. Summons has won it at the line. Summons is the winner. Comera King is second. Master Bob just gets up to be third ahead. Olympic Prize fourth. Well, Richard, is he a Mackerson type? I think so, Julian. He loves Cheltenham. He's one of his uh, distance. Um, I was a bit worried yesterday before I arrived here that the ground was going to be too soft for him, but I was pleasantly surprised the ground didn't ride too badly yesterday. I think over two and a half, it wouldn't really inconvenience him too much, so I'm sure he's the ideal type of horse. Super jumper and very consistent, so he's got a great chance. And what do you look upon as the danger? I think Tickety Boo obviously would be one of the main dangers. Western Sunset, I've got a little bit of a fear about. I think he's a very good horse. Not always um, shown his best form, but Captain Foster's horse seems to be running very well at the moment. So you'd obviously have to worry about him. So the horses walking out now onto the course itself. They'll be getting themselves into order. Tickety Boo, the first of those coming to meet us, followed by Villiers Town, the green colours of Cabby's Clown, and then the grey horse, Fred Winters, Mal Yamal in Sheikh Ali Abu Kamsin's colours. Peter Schoonamore in the plates. Well, what a marvellous tonic the last winner would be for Fred because that looks an exciting horse. Then there is Summons, lovely horse Summons. And this one, of course, has been Julian Wilson's hack in the past, but he's Richard Rose ride today. So they're parading for the Mackerson Gold Cup, two and a half mile chase. There is very promising, carries 12 stone, Richard Dunwoody. He's five to one favourite, very promising. Sea Merchant follows him from Arthur Stevenson's yard. Here he is, Sea Merchant, good horse, ridden by the claimer, Alan Merrigan. And this horse never won to be overlooked. 14 to 1 shot. He's often winning big races under big handicap weights, and he carries 11-1 today. Third in the parade there, the brown colours, Western Sunset. This fella was third behind, very promising first amount, not very far away, has a good each-way chance. Huel Davis in the saddle. Behind him, very much on his toes, Tickety-Boo. You can see he was like that in the paddock and he's still bouncing now. 
Behind him is Villiers Town from Arthur Stevenson's yard. Ridley Land's car broke down, he was unable to get here. Tom Morgan now takes the ride. 20 to one shot, Villiers Town. I think he's probably a little bit out of his depth. He's better off carrying 12 stone against uh, lesser rivals. But you can see he knows what he's here for. He's got a drop nose band to keep his mouth shut. Tom Morgan obviously got his hands full at the moment. Number seven is Cabby's Clown. Lovely horse, this. Cabby's Clown from David Ellsworth's yard. And ridden by Ross Arnott, who I think is a very underrated and underused jockey. He won a beautiful race on this fellow at Ascot last season and certainly does click with this horse. This horse needs a kick in the belly to jump well, and young Ross is the man to do it. Then the grey Malyamal getting whiter with years. Could he make it another win for Sheikh Ali Abu Kamsin? Fred Winter, who've nearly made this race their own. 10 to 1 from 12s. Peter Scudamore rides. Summons, who we've already seen being kept warm by his blanket until the very last moment. Second on uh, his only run so far this season. Can he go one better? 10 2 only on his back. A 6 to 1 shot at the moment. Then Bo Ranger. Well, this would be an amazing rejuvenation if he wins. 6 to 1 shot. Mark Perrett rides him. He's been out with the washing for a season and a bit, but he has been a good horse in the past and put up a good performance first time out to finish second to duty. And then Reppington. Reppington, big, excitable horse, this. At home and on the race course, as you can see, head up. He's not going to miss many tricks. 14 to 1 from 16. Colin Hawkins rides for Neville Crump. Then Fudge Delight. And this one ridden by Simon Sherwood for Oliver Sherwood. He's down on 10 stone 2, a 10 to 1 shot. Then in the green and white colours behind him is GA, ridden by Robert Supple. This pair had a fall last time out. 33 to 1 at the moment. Then Music Be Magic follows him. Music Be Magic, winner last time out from Summons. 12 to 1 from 16s. Phil Tuck rides for Gordon Richards. And last but not least is Brave Huzar. There he is in the yellow hat, just going away behind GA. Ridden by Brendan Powell for Roger Curtis. He's won his last two races and he is 33 to 1 at the moment. Now, Brave Hussar, well, I always thought he had a few ideas of his own about racing, but he seems to have come good now. But it would be a lot to ask him to win this, I think. Although he is getting weight, he was along, well, not too far out of the handicap. He was handicapped at nine stone eight. Roger Curtis doing well as a trainer. And this would certainly be a crowning glory for him if Brave Hussar were to win. Good race, competitive because of the handicap. 12 stone down to 10 stone between them. Certainly, you can make a case for nearly every horse in this race. Let's see at the market. Now well, we have joint favourites, very promising. And Tickety Boo on 5 to 1. Summons and Bow Ranger, 6 to 1. A Fudge Delight and Malia Mal, 10 to 1. Music Be Magic is back to 12 to 1. There was a rush of money on this one. A Western Sunset, 14 to 1, so is Reppington. Sea Merchant has gone from 14s to uh, 16 to 1, and the favourite now is very promising at 9 to 2. It's 20 to 1, bar these. So a lot of horses around the same market, the betting market there. It certainly means that uh, it is a very open Mackerson, very promising. Can he carry top weight to victory? Last year he only had a pound less, he carried 11, 13 on that occasion. There is Bow Ranger, beautifully turned out, formerly trained by Jackie Thorne and before her, her father John. But uh, certainly on his debut for Martin Pipe, he gave lumps of weight away to Doody and only just failed to hold the winner. Now he's dropped right down in the handicap, but remember, only 18 months ago, he beat Wayward Lad at Liverpool. Racing down to the final fence now, and Bow Ranger and Hewell Davis holding Wayward Laird and looking as though they only have to jump it. Bo Ranger jumps it clear of Wayward Laird. Bo Ranger from Wayward Laird. And here is going to be a complete upset. Can Wayward Laird make up the seaway? He's trying to, but he'll never get there. It's Bo Ranger from Wayward Laird. And there's going to be another turn up as Bo Ranger wins it from Wayward Laird. Bo Ranger the winner. Wayward Laird is second. Yes. Bo Ranger, can he come back uh, after being in the doldrums? He's dropped right down in the weights. With me now is Bill Smith. Bill, what chances do you give Bo Ranger? 
Well, he's certainly handicapped today. If he's going to have any chance, he's right on the correct mark. Last year, due to beating way with Ladd, he went up in the weights quite a bit. And, uh, you know, it does just stop them. But he's come right down. He's changed stables. It may help him. Martin Pipe's done a lot of good things in the past with horses. Yes, of course, changing stables uh, often produces a result. It's a change of tactics, a change of air, and it certainly bucks them up. He looks very well, always carries a fair bit of flesh. On the far side of him, Mal Yamal. Well, wouldn't this be marvellous if this one can win for Fred Winter, Sheikh Ali Abu Kamsin? Grey horse, Bill, certainly fancied. Yes, these grey horses get much lighter as they get older. He was an iron grey when he was younger. Not always the easiest to rise. Took a little bit of time to get used to jumping fences, but now he seems to have got the hang of it. And he should go well today. Yes, here an exciting time at the start. All the jockeys that though look smiling. Peter Scudamore smiling away. I hope he's smiling at the end of the race. And in the bright yellow colours of Tickety Boo, I've just heard that uh, he was uh, gambled on this morning to lose a quarter of a million pounds at six to one uh, he, uh, with Ladbrook. So a hefty gamble on Tickety Boo. There he is. And as you saw in the paddock, very much on his toes. He's settled now, though, and uh, is really getting in the right mood for the race. And this is quite important, Bill. It is. This horse always gets a bit on his toes in the paddock, so it's nothing to really worry about. He always does it. I see he's quite heavily bandaged in front, which uh, sometimes is a sign of a little bit of a problem. Yes, it may just also be protection against the fences and uh, stopping him uh, galloping into himself. Of quite often, horses injure themselves with their hind legs cutting into their four legs. Number 17 there, that is Music Be Magic. Now, this was one of the most exciting novices we'd ever seen, and he's a very bold jumper, Bill. Yeah, lovely horse. This season before last, he really did look like becoming something extra. Last year, just sort of got a little bit troubled with his jumping, a little bit over bold, but uh, he's done it well this time. Beat Summons here last time out, but he's t 10 pounds better off for that. Well, the Mackerson the Gold Cup, they're running for a beautiful trophy, and certainly I would like to have this uh, sitting at my home, but I doubt whether I ever will. Anyway, who can but try? These owners now will be getting just as excited as their horses, and that, the beautiful trophy. Number 12 is Fudge Delight. This one, they're very close up in the betting, but a whole host of horses close. Trained by Oliver Sherwood, ridden by his brother. Do you give him any chance, Bill? Yeah, good sort of horse. Buy Little Buskins. Wing Canton winner last time out. Just the right type of horse. Oliver Sherwood and... Uh, they're getting all these horses into good form now. They're just coming to, to their best. Yes, and now is the time to come to their best indeed. Number three is a horse that I fancy. This is Western Sunset. Menelik out of uh, Sunset Queen is his breeding, and he's trained by Tim Forster. If he's come on at all from his first run behind Very Promising and Pearly Man at Devon, he must be in with a chance, but they all do. It looks as like if they're coming in. Very Promising, 9-2 to two joint. Favourite with Tickety Boo, and they're off. Join Peter. And coming to the first of the 15 fences with Bow Ranger, the early leader. Bow Ranger from very promising on the inside. G up there, GA up there with Villiers Town and Cavies Khan came next as they jumped the first. Then Fudge Delight behind them, Summons and Reppington, and then Sea Merchant. And last at the moment is Malia Mal, Bow Ranger and Villiers Town almost together with that one with GA very close in third. Fudge Delight and Cavies Clown next. Then comes very promising. Music the Magic's up there on the outside on the inner summons. Then comes Reppington and Western Sunset as they jump that one. Then Sea Merchant. Then Brave Huzar, Tickety Boo. And last is the Grey Malia Mal and still Bow Ranger out there in front from GA in second. Then comes Villiers Town. Behind Villiers Town is Cabby's Clown. Very promising and Fudge Delight and Reppington and Sea Merchant. Behind Sea Merchant is Summons. Then comes Music Be Magic, Brave Azar, Western Sunset, the senior runner, Tickety Boo, and finally Malia Mal, and still Bow Ranger in the lead as they come towards the fourth of the 15 fences in the 28th running of the Mackerson Gold Cup. Bow Ranger with his white face showing in the lead from GA in second. Very promising over on the far side, prominent Cavies Clown is next. Then comes Villiers Town, tracked by Reppington and Sea Merchant over the fifth and still Bow Ranger from GA. Villiers Town and very promising and Reppington and Sea Merchant there, followed by Tickety Boo has made a bit of progress in the center of the field. Then comes Music Be Magic and Malia Mal still the back marker. And Bow Ranger 
from GA as they come towards the six. Reppington has moved into third. Cavies Clown four. Very promising five over on the far side. Villiers Town and Sea Merchant and Summons and Music Be Magic and Tickety Boo and then Fudge Delight and Brave as are. And over on the far side, Malia Malu jumped out particularly well and has gone up to join about four of them now uh, in rear, but not that far behind the leader, who's still Bow Ranger, GA. Then very promising on the inside in Reppington. Behind Reppington is Cavie's Clown, Sea Merchant, as they come to the seventh. Summons is next, and then Music Be Magic. Bow Ranger lands in the lead from Reppington, GA, very promising. They're all safely over that, but Fudge Delight made a little mistake there. Bow Ranger in the lead from Reppington and GA, very promising is four. Then comes Summons, Music Be Magic, Sea Merchant and Cabby's Clown, then Tickety Boo, Malia Malu's made ground on the inside, then Western Sunset, then Villiers Town, a brave as are, and finally Fudge Delight over the eighth. And still, Bow Ranger in the lead from Reppington. GA, very promising, Summons, Sea Merchant, Music Be Magic, Tickety Boo, Cabby's Clown, Malia Mal, Brave Fazar making a better ground over the water, still all standing too, and Bow Ranger in the lead from Reppington and GA, very promising, Sea Merchant, Music Be Magic and Summons, this is the first of the ditches, Bow Ranger lands in the lead from Reppington, GA, and a mistake there by Very Promising in fourth, he's dropped back to fifth now as Music Be Magic goes fourth. Coming down to another plane one, number 11 of the 15 fences. Bow Ranger lands clear of Reppington and GA. Music Be Magic is fourth. And then Western Sunset making ground in fifth. Just behind Western Sunset, Tickety Boo making progress with Sea Merchant. Then very promising. Then Malia Mal coming to the final ditch now. Bow Ranger with a five length lead and Mark Perry over the final ditch. GA jumped it second. Music Be Magic third. Reppington four. Tickety Boo five. Behind Tickety Boo is Summons. Then comes Very Promising. They're at the top of the hill now, beginning the run down now. And they've got three left to jump in the Mackerson Gold Cup. And Bow Ranger, who's made just about all the running so far, is four lengths clear of GA in second. Music Be Magic is third. Tickety Boo is four. Five Reppington, six summons, making a little bit of ground. Coming down to the third last now, and still Bow Ranger from GA. Music Be Magic, Tickety Boo at the third last. Bow Ranger and Mark Barrett. They land three lengths clear of Music Be Magic in second. GA is third and four is Tickety Boo still making progress. Coming to the penultimate fence now. Bow Ranger from Music Be Magic. Then comes GA and Tickety Boo. These four clear of the remainder. Bow Ranger landed in the lead. Music Be Magic a faller. Slightly hampered GA. And it's Bow Ranger with a five, six, seven, eight length advantage now as he approaches the final fence. Bow Ranger from GA and Tickety Boo as they come to the last fence in the Mackerson Gold Cup. Bow Ranger really looking as though he's only going to jump it. Bow Ranger with his white face coming there, fresh as a daisy, there fresh as paint, he lands like a daisy and strides away up towards the line with Tickety Boo closing on GA as they race into the closing stages. But Bow Ranger has this well sewn up. It's going to be close for a second with GA just getting the better of Tickety Boo as they race to the line. Applause there for Bow Ranger, the winner. GA is second, Tickety Boo is third, and four Western Sunset, and five very promising. Just in behind them came Reppington and Cavie's Clown. Behind Cavie's Clown was Bray Fazar and Summons. And then tarred horses in rear, Sea Merchant, Fudge Delight, Villiers Town, and Malia Mal. And so Bow Ranger wins the Mackerson Gold Cup number 10, owned by White Brothers of Taunton Limited, trained by Martin Pipe and ridden by Mark Perrett, the greatest uh, triumph uh, of his career. Second, number 13, GA, owned by Mr. Jeff Hubbard, trained by him and ridden by Robert Supple. And third was number four, Tickety Boo, owned by Mr. W.H. O'Gorman, trained by Jimmy Fitzgerald, ridden by Mark Dwyer, and fourth was number three, Western Sunset. Well, it's a long, long time since I've seen a Mackerson won so far from home. He'd won this race a mile from home, barring a fall. Coasting in the lead for Mark Perrett, having made almost every yard of the running and at a terrific gallop as well. Music with magic behind him, ploughs through that fence. Uh, and as you can see, uh, slightly interferes with Very Promising, but Very Promising was beaten a mile from home. Tickety-Boo also has to take evasive action there. But Mark Perrett merely heard the 
crash of the birch behind him as he scoots round that elbow with a lead of 10, 15 lengths already. GA's run a terrific race always in the van. Of the fancied ones, Tickety Boo's run best but without ever looking like getting in a blow. Very promising's made a bit of ground, but the weight and the dead ground too much. At the last, it's Bow Ranger bar a fall, and he jumps it as well as he's jumped any of them. A horse completely brought back to life, rejuvenated by Martin Pipe, all credit to him. GA jumps it in second, Tickety Boo in third, but Mark Perrett, who's had uh, such problems with injuries, comes in for the ride of his life here, a ride he'll always remember. And on the run in, he even increases his advantage, and he's right back to the horse that we saw beat Wayward Lad at Liverpool 19 months ago. A 15, perhaps 20 lengths winner of the Mackeson Go Cup. That's his 14th triumph in 44 races. Number 33, no less, of the season for Martin Pipe. And a fourth success for Mark Perry, but one that he'll remember for the rest of his days in chasing. Marvellous performance by this nine-year-old, by Bo Schapper out of San Martin, by Menelik. He looked to be well handicapped. And what, uh, what great advantage he took of that lenient weight of 10 stone two. Good to see Phil Tuck get to his feet after that fall of Music Be Magic, which looked as though it could be nasty because he had so many just uh, in behind him there, but he got to his feet all right, so he's unscathed. And run such a good race uh, up to that point, the Gordon Richards trained horse. Uh, with Bow Ranger uh, finally going off at 13 to two. The Exceptional gamble of the race, very promising. Never really looked like getting in the hunt. Once he made a mistake, uh, certainly running down the hill. And Tickety Boo, well, he had no chance with the winner unless uh, Bo Ranger made uh, a desperate error over the last two or three fences. He had a good battle with uh, GA for the minor place, with uh, GA, a previous uh, course winner just uh, battling him out of it in the closing stages. What a good servant uh, he's been to his own GA. 15 lengths, uh, the winner, no less, with half a length separating second and third. Only one rider when they set out had won this race previously. That was Richard Dunwoody on Very Promising. And I doubt whether from halfway uh, Richard had very much hope of duplicating his 1986 success. Very disappointing run by Mali Amal too for Fred Winter and his owner Sheikh Ali Abu Kamsin, who'd won it three times before with $50 more and half free twice, all of course trained by the great Fred. There's Martin Pipe on the right with the brown coat, the trilby. with his young rider, Mark Perry, who's done such a great job this afternoon. Second uh, time, this horse has won over the course. You may remember him achieving a great shock at Liverpool last year when he beat uh, Wayward Laird. And as a result, for a while, he was pretty harshly handicapped, but uh, he's... He slipped, slipped down in the scales lately, and this has clearly been to his great benefit this afternoon. Tremendous crowd here this afternoon, the group, the 28th winner of this curtain razor, really, to all the great natural hunt handicaps that we are looking forward to this winter. Carries a penalty value of £14,512. Close up there of young uh, Mark Perrett. Many of you will have seen him make the most spectacular recovery at uh, Plumpton at the last meeting. And he was on a runner-up, so he shouldn't have maintained the partnership at all. And this is certainly his biggest success uh, since he won the Triumph Hurdle here on Saxon Farm. His other great big, great Cheltenham Triumph, that of course at the National Hunt Festival. And so, with Bow Ranger the winner, the starting price is as follows. First number 10, Bow Ranger, 13 to 2. Second number 13, GA, 33 to 1. 
And third number four, Tickety Boo, nine to two. Now let's catch up with the other events today. The one o'clock at Huntington was won by number five, Great Destiny, 14 to one. And second number 18, Noble Rise, 20 to one. And third number 27, High River, 33 to one. 130, first number 25, Troop the Colour, 7 to 1. Second number 34, Mantinolas, 15 to 2. And third number 1, Fast Escape, 6 to 1. Newcastle, 1 o'clock, first number 5, Handy Trick, 7 to 4, Favourite. And second number 6, Silent Valley, 7 to 1. And third number 2, Jim Brook, 11 to 4. And there were five runners. Newcastle, 130, first number 8, Raise an Argument, 100 to 30. Second number five, Comorak King, a two to one favourite. And third number two, Fergie Foster, 11 to four. There were six runners. Windsor, 115. First number 22, Mausolee, four to one. Second number one, Hayfleet, six to one. And third number 39, Sunset Valley, eight to one. Windsor, 145. First number 12, Rambling Wild, nine to one. Second number one, Stirabout, six to one. And third number eight, Deep Ridge, six to one. Well, are you winning? Neither am I. Perhaps we'll come up on the pools. I've got some golf news for you, though. And in Adelaide, Ireland's Ronan Rafferty has won the South Australian Open. He shot a final round 69 to finish one stroke clear of Australia's Peter Fowler. And Britain's Sandy Lyle goes into today's final round of the Kapalua International Tournament in Hawaii, just one stroke behind the leader, American Andy Bean. Lyle, who won this tournament three years ago, shot a third round 67 for a total of 201 to close the gap on Bean, who had a 69. Lanny Watkins is third. Britain's Ian Woosnam is on 208 after a third round 70. Open champion Nick Faldo, he also shot a 70, two strokes further back on 210. Now, final Grand Prix of the season coming up, and this is the grit.